So when I first started getting asked to write for The Guardian and the New Statesman and I was travelling up and down the country to speak at universities, often at my own expense by the way, um, and these very elite activists, and I'm talking like, these are the social network around Charlie Gilmore who's like the son of a fucking member of Keith Floyd and Heathcote Rutherford who's by the way you know, as the son of an earl, and you know, these are the poshest people you've ever seen. Adam Ramsey is the son of a laird. These are basically the poshest brats you have ever seen. And they invited me to speak there, and I had never understood what they taught me. And it turned out they identified as my representation, and they identified as the voice of these systems, but they had absolutely no connection to them. And then they revealed that they had my trade union power, and that my trade unions had no connection to these institutions and that actually they were the protective seal around the Guardian. Now because they added a social dimension to political communication and because they're trying to maintain a false identity and you can see this around Twitter, they basically had to then devalue me as an object as most narcissists do and then come after me. And I'm not going to say that was pleasant, being terrorised by elite institutions in your own country for eight years because you exist and remind them they're full of shit is not fun, especially not when you're dealing with what I've just dealt with. But it was useful and it was cathartic and if policy was going to batter me for being a single parent and accidentally trying to undermine the rule, the rule of law for me, then at the very least I had our political establishment in a bubble where I could watch them and watch what they had to do to deliver this. So I did what social workers do and I observed and I recorded and I observed and I recorded every single attempt to triangulate on austerity that used Twitter. Often I was invited to be part of it, although that didn't last long. <laughs> and basically I kept this record for this reason. With an abusive dynamic, nobody ever wants to. What you have to do is you have to make clear that the people with power had it made aware of them that this was the consequence all the way along. And as I knew what this was, and you can see from that playlist, I already knew that Asteria was going to attempt to undermine the rule of law and I knew it would generate crisis. I also knew there was an end point and that I just had to keep recording to that end point and that end point, it turns out. I didn't know what I was going to observe in that period, but I knew I needed to observe it because we were nearing the end of a cycle and this information that I was collecting will be useful next cycle so we can understand. And what I accidentally managed to create was a record of a crisis in a mediating class at the end of a cycle, at the point in time where a culture whose function is to provide stability through manufacturing tribalism started generating instability because what they had ended up doing was, you know, going round and round in their tribal circles to facilitate the rule of law being undermined. I knew this was um, time limited because all these were responsibilities that couldn't be abdicated. And then because they were so abusive to me, I got to observe that in a way that other people wouldn't. Because basically you don't ever fucking bear your teeth at a social worker because you'll tell her more in that moment than you could possibly imagine. You stick a social worker in the middle of an abusive reflex in the middle of a political economy for eight fucking years. You have no idea the information that you are giving me or how efficiently I can reconstruct my understanding of things to accommodate that new information. So that's been really useful. And that record will be useful. And then because I had to use my blog, by and large, I wasn't being part of their culture, I was just observing them. I got to see the reaction that they had to becoming objects of analysis. So they're used to being able to place everybody else's objects and go through this kind of idealisation, devaluation thing that you see them repeating over and over again. But they had never been made objects of analysis. And they perceive that. They go, if you ask Dawn Foster at The Guardian, she'll tell you I'm a bully for making her friends objects of analysis while well, they used austerity to demonstrate elite social closure of the power of labour, to prevent discussion of consensus on welfare reform, local authority changes, and to try and get to Downing Street using abusive behaviour and abusive Jewish people. They genuinely believe that this is bullying to make them objects of analysis. So what I got was a record of our mediating class in the final years of a cycle. Now they don't know why this is important, because they're thick as fuck. But I know why this is important. And so I got to keep that. Now we're all upset at the minute, because we're not on Twitter. That's your political establishment have moved into a chat room, and they're all locked in, going round in circles. 
You can see all the different institutions, the social cultures that link with each institution. You can create records to show that they knew stuff during this period. And then as the body count comes out of austerity over the next few years, and I think I don't know how long it will take, you know, it may come up that we're talking about, you know, six to seven figure death toll. That culture have just created a written chronological record for seven years. Owen Jones, Ellie Mayo Hager, and James Butler, Laurie Penny. They didn't know that the only reason that they have an identity is as a consequence of media democracy. And when they tried to add a social dimension to political communication, they had to resort to kind of narcissistic abuse and abusive behaviour. And it's locked them in circles, but they have provided like a crystal demonstration, like a little vignette that can be used to demonstrate how elite social closure generated instability at the end of this cycle. Now, that doesn't seem, you know, it's not that interesting, it's a bit boring, but it's really, really useful. And because they can't reflect on power, you have your political establishment in an observable chat room showing that they have no function, they have no connection to these institutions that they're claiming voice for, and that they're willing to behave abusively. And this thing about where they just create objects to attack so they can have Twitter storms, so they can, they're just going to keep doing that. That's incredibly powerful. It's more powerful when we're not in it, because they can't say that it's our fault that they keep going around in these circles. And when they keep going around in the circles, even when we're out of it, they've lost the ability to say, well, it's because she was bullying me. And all they've done is they'll keep going around the same, same patterns of behaviour. That's an incredible amount of power that you have got using Twitter. And it's actually easiest to exercise that power by not using Twitter at all. So I'm not really asked. I am a bit asked about not having my Twitter account anymore. But they've just undone the parasitic dynamic that upheld the entire new liberal political economy. And then they've given me a proper live record that they've participated in by relentlessly abusing me. And that's excellent. So I've got, my blog is a nine year record of that process, just accidentally, because I embody those tensions. So all I'm saying is that Twitter is incredibly powerful, but it's not powerful because they're gonna give you a spot in The Guardian, or they're gonna give you, you will never be allowed in that world to change anything. They will bite you before, you, this is not a world that changes, that's why they're so locked in and bloody calcified. The power of Twitter is that they're there dying and you can watch it and record it and use it. Social media is incredibly powerful but Twitter is only the first transition of it. Now I might set up an Instagram account this week, I don't know, I might go to Snapchat, I might not use either, but that's it. They're in a multi-dimensional world where we can just do that. And they're trapped in a bubble created by their own abusive behaviour, telling everybody loudly that they have no connection to the population, they have no connection to the institutions that they shape, and the only thing that they have is abusive behaviour. The best way to deal with that is to have the conversation that they can't have be what they can't be. They can't prevent discussion of political consensus, and they can't prevent people talking anymore, because they've ejected themselves from the conversation with the word tough. We need to now have the conversation they can't have and use them to demonstrate the conversation that we're having. The power of Twitter was never in the possibility of a media career. The power of Twitter was it was where our political media went to die.